Hey guys, Matthew here, and today I want to bring you guys a very quick video, hopefully, on how I run my maps. Basically, uh, a question that I've been asked a ton on stream is basically how to make this uh, base, this map base, and also uh, how to be able to sustain it forever. Uh, also, which sections I use, what watchstones I use, uh, which scarabs I use, and which map mod I use. Uh, so I wrote everything down in a little notepad so you can pause the video or take a screenshot if you don't want to uh, if you want to just grab the information and leave um, But let me explain this real quick So how we're gonna actually make this map here is basically a map that is as you can see areas influenced by the elder But does not have the occupied by one That's of the guardians This is actually a Xana map that she can sell to you She'll sell either elder influence or uh, or shaper influence. So you're gonna buy these maps here So for example this one uh, this t16 arachnid tomb I could go ahead and buy this and then I can actually use horizon orbs to make it into um, into the map that I want now, she will only sell natural tier maps, meaning that, for example, if you wanted a Burial Chambers, which is a T15 map, uh, she has to sell you a T15 map. You can Horizon Orb into a Burials. That being said, say if Burial Chambers was a T13 and you could upgrade it to a T15 via Watchstones, then she would not sell you a T15 Burials. She would sell you a T13 Burials because that is the, uh, that is the natural tier of Burials for the given League. Uh, so that is one thing to note. So lucky for us, Barrels is a T15 this league, so we can easily get access to it uh, with uh, with the areas influenced by the Elder or Shaper. It's up to you, really. Next, let's talk about Delirium Orbs. The three best right now are Scarabs, Breach, and Blight. And I say right now, but that's pretty much always been the case and more than likely always going to be the case. Uh, Scarabs are not so good right now. You're basically refunding yourself, but you're not really making any profit. Uh, if you don't mind selling the Breach and the Blight maps and whatnot, uh, I would recommend doing those and leaving Scarabs aside. Despite the fact that I run Scarabs, that is purely due to the fact that I'm lazy and I don't want to be buying Scarabs from other people. Uh, next, to finish the map up, we are going to use a Hillock Bench of 35% quality. And that is going to, as you can see, get the map to 35% quality uh, like this. So instead of having 20%, you have... An extra 15 which is almost double and this quality is always going to stay there uh, so that when you dupe the map when you fracture it basically this quality never goes away so that it does increase the uh, the additional pack size and quantity or not pack size sorry but it does increase the uh the quantity uh of the map base because you have very little control when you actually dupe the map, such as you can see right now, this map has only 78% quantity, which is pretty weak. Now imagine if this was a 20% quality base, uh, this map would only have like 64 qu uh, quantity, and that would be really, really low quantity for a map that is costing us about two exalts on average to run uh, with everything considered. So you never want to run the original map, You're, you are going to dupe it via fossils. Now the following fossils that I use is dense and fractured. Fractured basically makes the copy of the map, which is what you're going to run. And I use dense so that I, I can't roll no regen or more monster life on the map. This makes the map uh, way less annoying to run overall. Uh, if you don't want to run reflect and if you don't run one run minus max resistances, you could instead use corroded if these are mod, uh, mods that your build can't run. That being said, Reflect can easily be taken care of through the uses of Sextants. Uh, so I pers personally don't run this. I, I run Dense for the No Regen because that is the most annoying mod for my build. Even if I could run them with a the Mana Flask, it's just too annoying. Watchstones. Uh, you can use Misinformation, War Amongst the Stars, Booming Populous, Terror, and Stalwart Defenders. Now, Misinformation, in my opinion, is too expensive at the moment, being about like 2.5 or 3 exalt each for Misinformation. It's just not worth it as a solo player. That being said, if you play in groups, I would say that this is completely, uh, completely affordable and doable and definitely worth it because it multiplies all the modifiers on your map, which means it also multiplies the pack size and the quantity and the rarity of the map, which is pretty big. Um... War Amongst the Stars is basically just additional packs uh, packs of monsters. It can reach up to 14 packs of monsters, 7 Shaper and 7 Elder packs. And uh, I typically uh, try to buy some with an average of about 11. So it could be, let's say, 4 and 7 or 6 and 6 or something like that, or 6 and 5. Uh, and I want to have like 11 more packs of monsters on my map. So I don't go for perfect ones, but I go for decently 
uh, decent ones. Booming, uh, booming Populous basically gives you double-ish the pack size. It's, uh, as you can see right here, it's um, up to 20% more pack size, 10 to 20%. And as you can see, a regular map, especially this one, which has rolled like absolute crap, has only 17% pack size. So this is like more than double the pack size for about 50C every 15 maps or so, or 12 maps. So it, it is very good value for your money. Now, if you wish to upgrade the level of the zone, so for example, Burial Chambers is a T15, but I want to be farming Cluster Jewels, item level 84, so I need the map to be a T17. So this is where I use Terror and Stalwart Defenders. Uh, these are basically the same thing. They just give you plus one level of the actual zone, uh, but they also increase the difficulty of the map by a decent amount. As you can see, Terror gives upwards of 30% more monster damage, which means you're getting hit for 30% harder. And Stalwart Defenders gives up to 40% more monster life, which means you are doing a lot less damage. So these are going to make your map substantially harder, uh, but uh, you get the zone levels, meaning these T15s are now T17s, meaning area level 84, and that allows uh, us to um, basically farm item level 84 and 86 bases, uh, like influence bases, but also uh cluster jewels of item level 84 because cluster jewels unless dropped by the bosses will drop uh from the zone level if they're dropping from regular monsters so you do want to be farming t17 maps for the potential for the gg clusters when i say gg clusters i am of course talking about the or or uh, the um or stacking clusters with six passives six percent non-curse or from your skills and these are going to be item level 84 and these are worth about 17 to 20 exalt per cluster right now uh, just for a white cluster with nothing on it uh, because or stacker is very popular as always so next let's talk about the sextants and that's pretty much going to cover uh, most of the video uh, the sextants that i keep personally is either alva einhard metamorph so these are all league mechanic and they add a good bit of monsters i'm not a fan of abyss i tend to keep cold packs of monsters because cold pack of monsters basically multiplies my own damage because it gives player and monsters take it 12 percent increased damage which means you take more cold damage but uh, that's not a problem for my build but I deal 12% increased damage, which is basically uh, a 12% more damage multiplier, meaning I'm going to have an easier time clearing the maps. And it kind of basically um, makes up for the fact that Stalwart Defenders gives the monsters a lot more life. Now, this is not too big of a deal. And realistically, I don't need that kind of damage. Uh, but I tend to keep when I get the cold pack, uh, the, the cold monsters. Uh, I do keep players cannot roll uh, cannot take reflected damage. Now I almost always force this on my sextant, and this can get pretty pricey. Uh, but what you can always do is, if you fracture your maps and get reflect on it, you can put it aside, and then whenever you do get the reflect sextant, roll all of your maps with which have reflect on them. And that's an easy uh, easy way to fix this. Now one of my favorite uh, my favorite two uh, mods are basically additional legion and additional breaches. Those give you big big pack size, lots of additional monsters on your map, and uh, paired with the uh, scarabs, which I'll go over with in a second. Uh, these are quite nice to use. You could also keep thirty five percent mysterious clusters of barrels, but the thing is, some of these are good, but the others are bad. So you don't really know if you're getting a good thirty five or a bad thirty five. And obviously, if you get beyond, that's pretty good. Now, I'm not a fan, but I will accept any Poison, Chaos, Fire, Lightning, or Convert monsters if the other three sextants are good, because I don't see the point of rolling, say, 30 additional sextants uh, just to get one more good sextant when all my other sextants are pretty good. I try to use a maximum of about 20 sextants per three maps, so seven sextant uh, per map, which is about seven chaos investment uh, per map in sextants. Uh, this is quite a lot. You could easily uh, tune that down if you uh, don't try uh, actively uh, to push for these better sextant modifier, and if you accept more of the, uh, like for example, additional chaos uh, monsters or additional lightning monsters and stuff like that. So two more things to talk about real quick is basically map mods. So uh, map mods, basically, uh, these are 100% Delirious maps, meaning we cannot run Delirious on them. Uh, if we were not running Delirious maps, so for example, the meta right now is running Tropical Island, we could put Delirium. That is really up to preference. But personally, I like to put Nemesis 
because since I'm running burials and going for doctor cards, might as well also go for them juicy headhunters. So I typically run Nemesis. If you're going for something that is a lot more consistent, you are going to want to put Beyond. Beyond is going to add a tremendous amount of monsters to your map, especially if you've got a good clear speed build. Uh, with all the legions and all the breaches, you are going to get an insane amount of value from Beyond. And uh, basically, on average, you're going to get probably about a full a full extra bar of rewards to your delirious rewards which is pretty big in terms of consistency but i'm a bit of a gambler and i love dropping myself some headhunters so i like to go with nemesis um and finally the last thing that we need to talk about is going to be sextants now there's a lot of sexes that you can use there's two of them that i would say are mandatory and that is going to be gilded breach scarabs and gilded legion scarabs now if you're a little bit more on the cheap side or maybe you're uh, trying to save some currency here and there you could also go polished but i would not recommend going breaches or sorry rusted because we are investing 1.5 exalt on the fractured fossil so might as well spend the extra few chaos for some good scarabs so Gilded Breach and Gilded Legion add a ton of monsters to your map and overall are really good ways to juice it up. Uh, the next sextants or scarabs are really kind of up to you. Uh, I typically go with Divination because I'm running burials for Doctor cards, which are like a big drop. And since, as I already mentioned, I am farming for Headhunters, so I typically go with Reliquary. Now, if you are running Beyond instead of Nemesis and you're trying to get just as many monsters as you can in your map, I would recommend going with Harbinger. Harbinger adds quite a bit of monsters, four additional Harbingers, which all have like four to five packs of monsters that they spawn. So there's a lot in more, a lot more monsters in your map. Uh, we cannot use Elder or Shaper Scarab since the map is already influenced by the Elder. Uh, so that's that's out of the question. Um, otherwise, I. Yeah, I mean, if you really wanted to, you could go with Polished, or sorry, you could go with Cartography Scarabs. That would help you sustain a little bit more. But since we're fracturing the maps, we really don't care about sustaining. The sustain is basically created by ourselves. <clears throat> sorry about that. I would obviously never run Perenda Scarabs. Uh, El or Shaper can't really be done. Ambush is a good option if you get the 500% enraged uh, quantity sextant. Uh, if you do get that one, pairing that up with Ambush will basically get you quite a bit of additional uh, quantity. And if you can also get Monstrous Treasure to proc with all that combination, you can get a lot of uh, a lot of six links to drop if you're doing corrupted uh, strong boxes, if you're corrupting your strong boxes, or if you have the corrupted strong box sextant as well. So that is basically divine farming, which is completely different. Uh, Metamorph is always a good option if you're just going for juice. So if I was going for pure monster count in my map, I would go Harbinger, Metamorph, Legion, and Breach. Uh, metamorph always also the gilded one has all metamorph monsters have rewards which is really good uh it drops a a lot of uh, a, a lot of different um parts for the metamorph but also overall lots of di uh, lots of loot which can be quite valuable uh exalts are also pretty common from uh from metamorphs and they are very cheap 2.5 c for a gilded it is a almost impossible not to make your money back every single time you use those uh, you could go Sulfite if you're a Delver and you need Sulfite, but obviously you wouldn't know that. Uh, Reliquary, as I said, if you're farming Headhunters, and Bestiary is actually quite good right now because there's a lot of demand for the Split Beast because people are splitting the blueprints. Uh, so Bestiary is a uh, an option if you uh, want to be farming Beasts. Uh, that being said, I would highly recommend using Gilded Bestiary in rotation, in uh, Beast Rotas, not uh, by yourself. Uh, because a lot of the time you're basically not going to get anything uh, in terms of returns unless you sell the yellow beasts in bulk. But again, that's a different story. So that is basically it. That's how I juice my map and how I made my map base from scratch. Uh, obviously, there's one thing I didn't really talk about and that is prophecies. Uh, so might as well mention that real quick. Plague of frogs, plague of rats. Those are always good. Uh, both of them can proc. And then any Tempest will add like, I believe 20 or 30% quantity to your map. So when you do have them, go ahead and use them. I don't min max my usage of prophecies because uh, I'm a little bit too lazy for that, but there is definitely some value, especially because they are very, very cheap, especially this league. They drop in ridiculous amount uh, from heist from the league mechanic. So people are selling them even in bulk for very, very cheap. 
So that's pretty much it for the video. Before I go, I want to say a huge thank you to my supporters, Mario, Luro, Gaikona, Kfish, Dr. Radu, Scott, Zarashi, Kevin, Casticus, Matus, Dieselboy, and Dan S. Huge thank you to you guys. Also, huge thanks to anybody else who supported me in the past or who wishes to remain anonymous. Hopefully, you guys learned a little something, enjoyed this video, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.